Hello, my first graders. Today, we're working on page 587 in our math book. That's lesson 10.3. Okay, so if you're not on page 587, hit pause, find your page, hit play when you are ready. All right. So today, we're going to be looking at different types of graphs. Um, we're going to be looking at a bar graph. However, on this first page, this isn't a bar graph. This is a picture graph, just like we were looking at the other day, right? Remember in our last lesson, we looked at the picture graph where we made circles. Okay, here's a picture graph again. But we'll be moving forward with turning things into bar graphs, okay? Just a different type of graph. All right. This says, type of sneaker we are wearing. Laces, no laces. So this shows how each circle stands for one child. So this shows how many children had laces shoes and how many children had no laces. It says, what question could Emma's class answer using the graph? Write the question they could answer. So let's think about what we could ask using this graph. Are we gonna ask about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? No, right? Our graph is talking about laces and no laces. Could we ask someone how many, how many kids wore laces? We could, right? And then we could answer that by counting up the number of kids who wore laces. Could we ask how many kids wore no laces? We could. Could we ask how many more kids wore laces than no laces? Yeah. So my first graders, what I'd love for you to do is to find somebody at home, show them this graph, ask them a question about this graph. There's no need to write anything down, but I'd like you to ask, ask them a question about your graph and see if they get the answer right. I'm curious. So go ahead and pause. Find somebody that you can ask a question to about the graph. See if they can answer it. Hit play when you're ready. All right. Did your person answer the question? Did you ask a question? Could they answer it? All right. Let's turn to the next page where we're going to look at bar graphs today. Okay. In a bar graph, each bar shows information you can compare the lengths of the bar. What title describes this graph? Okay, so that was a lot of information there. This is a bar, okay, a bar. Think like a candy bar, chocolate bar, okay, a bar. The reason why it's a bar, right, is because it's long, sometimes it's thin, sometimes it's broken into little rectangles, little par parts, okay. So the bar graph, okay, allows us to see how many, okay, or what number of an item there is, okay? So this says art tools. We have markers, paintbrushes, crayons. So this shows us how, oh, number of children. So our numbers are down here. One of the things we can do with a bar graph is for, to see how many people chose markers we can either count these squares, see how there's squares in here? That's one, two, three, four, five. Or notice, see where the bar stops, right? Bars always start at the very beginning, close to the word, always in the first block, and goes, goes forward. We can see where it stops and look down. Here's the number five. So that tells us five kids chose markers, but we also can count the bars. One, two, three, four, five. So let's look at paintbrushes. How many kids picked paintbrushes? So let's look. We can count the ball. We can count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or we can see where does it go up to and look down. Same thing with crayons, right? How many kids choose crayons? Well, it stops right here. Two. Okay. Our graph is missing a title. Well, what were they trying to do? What was this whole graph about? Was it their favorite thing to do art with? Favorite art tool, right? Because here's art tools here. 
So this probably could have been about their favorite art tools. Some people chose markers, some people chose paintbrushes, some people chose crayons. So we're gonna give it a title, favorite. And if you need the word favorite, it's right over here. I can copy it from right over there. Favorite art tool because that's what the whole graph was about. It told us the different art tools here, right? It told us how many kids picked it. So our title is Favorite Art Tools. So if you need to pause to finish writing that, go ahead. If not, I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Down here, we need to answer questions about the favorite art tools. Okay, use the bar graph to answer the questions. Okay, so whenever they show us a graph and give us questions, we need to use the graph to answer. How many children chose paintbrushes? I want you to answer that, and then I want you to answer how many children chose crayons. So pause, fill that in, hit play when you're ready to check. All right, paintbrushes. You should have written six. And you should have written two for children who chose crayons. And we see that on our graph. Paintbrushes, we can count these squares, or we look down and see six. Crayons, same thing. Count them, or look down and see two. How many more children chose paintbrushes than crayons? So think about that. When they ask us how many more, or how many fewer, then what kind of problem is that? Are we adding these two together or minusing? Yes, we're finding the difference. We want to subtract to minus. So we need the number for paintbrush and the number for crayons. One of the things you can do is write it right underneath it to start with. Look, paintbrushes was six, crayons was two. So when we make our minus problem, we start with the biggest number. So six was our biggest. Six minus two equals. So again, these are small numbers where if you want to use your fingers, you can. If you still have your number line, okay, or you wanna make a number line to use, you can do that. I'm gonna show you with my fingers. Here's my six. I take two away. One two. How many are left? One, two, three, four. So four more children chose paintbrushes than crayons. The other thing I can do is look at my bar graph. Here's where crayon stops, right? Crayon stops right here. Here's where paintbrushes stop. Well, look, how many more were there? One, two, three, four. Okay, that helps us to compare as well. There's four left. And that's what we did, six minus two is four. So four more children chose paintbrushes. What art tool did the fewest children choose? Okay, so you're gonna do the four and five. Four asks for the fewest children, which one was the fewest? And then five is which one did they choose, which one was chosen the most? So you figure out fewest most. Hit play when you're ready to check. Okay, let's see, how did you do? The fewest, well, you should have circled crayons. Crayons was the fewest, only two, smallest amount. We can see that on our graph right there, two bars. Most, what did most choose? Well, look, paintbrush was the bigger one, so you should have circled the paintbrush. Okay, if you need to pause to fix anything or to work, go ahead. If not, I'm gonna look at this bar graph. Use the bar graph to answer the questions. How many children chose, oh, so you're gonna do a couple of these. I want you to do number six and number seven. How many children chose cars? How many children chose trucks, the dump truck? Dump truck, look, see how we can match that up? Fill that in, fill that in, hit play when you're ready. All right, let's see, how did you do? How many children chose cars? Well, look, our bar graph goes up, doesn't it? How many, we can count them. One, two, 
And look, that stops right here at the number two. Two chose a car as their favorite vehicle. Same favorite vehicle, car. How many chose dump truck as their favorite? Well, here was dump truck. Whoa, there was a lot. How many were there? There was six. It goes all the way up to the top line. Six people, or we could have counted. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six children chose dump truck as their favorite vehicles. All right. How many children in all chose car and dump truck? All right, so let's think about this. When they wanna know in all, do we subtract these or are we putting them together? Yeah, in all means we're putting them together. So let's see, car was how many? Two. Dump truck, we said was, oh, we did that, right? Six. And if we're putting them together, are we minusing them or plusing them? Yeah, we're plusing, adding them together. So two plus six. I want you to pause, solve that, write your answer in. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, what did you get? Six plus two or two plus six is eight. Eight children chose car and dump truck. And we, when we're counting them all together, we can count up the car and the dump truck. Look, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's take a look at number nine. How many more children chose trucks than cars? So think about the words that are used. Remember, the words are important. How many more children chose trucks than cars? Are they asking us how many chose them all together or are we comparing them? So think more than, less than. Comparing, right? We're finding the difference between trucks and cars. Okay, so when we're finding the difference, it's a subtraction problem. So let's look at trucks. How many kids chose trucks? One, two, three, four, five. How many children chose cars? Two. So we need to make our minus problem. What number do we start with? Five, right, the bigger number. Minus two equals blank. Well, we can do two things. We can compare using our using our bar graph, right? Here's our five truck and two. So look, it stops right here, right? What's the difference? How many more? One, two, three, right? So three more children chose truck than car. We can also do a minus problem with our fingers, right? Here's our five, take away two, three are left. Either way, we can use our bar graph to help us compare or we can do our minus problem. So just remember, more than, less than, fewer than, okay? That's comparing, it's a minus problem, subtraction. Which vehicles did the most children choose? Okay, which vehicle did the most kids choose? Which one, what one? Yeah, the dump truck, right, look. We can see that, just see that on our graph. They had the most children. All right, thanks, math on the spot. Order the vehicles from least to most votes. Write one for the least votes and three for the most votes. Okay, so when we go from least to most, least means the smallest amount to three, the most, which is the biggest. So let's look, which one is the smallest amount? Look at our graph. Which one has the smallest amount of votes? Yeah, the car, right? Look, that's the smallest amount. So we would give the car a one. So they said from least to greatest. So after the car, which one has a little bit more than the car? Which one would be next? Yeah, the truck. This one's a little bit more. So we would say two, and then three for the most. Which one had the most? 
near the dump truck. That got number, th that gets a three. All right, so we went from least to most. If you need to pause, you can. If not, we're gonna turn the page. Use the bar graph to answer the question. All right, fasteners. Okay, fasteners are how you close something. We have zippers and buttons. And this graph is about how our jackets are fastened. Okay, so think about your jacket. A zipper or by button? What are the fasteners? Fasteners are zippers or buttons. Number of jackets. So this shows how many jackets has zippers, how many jackets have buttons. Kim puts on a jacket with buttons. Add her jacket to the graph. Now, how many jackets have buttons? So the first thing we need to do is they told us to add, add her jacket to the graph. Well, if her jacket has buttons, how do we show that we have another person with buttons? What do I do? Do I you touch the zipper column? No, nope. I go down here to buttons, right? So if it had two and we need to add how many more? One more. So am I coloring in this whole thing? No, just a square. So I'm gonna color this one in. I'm gonna just do a quick shade, okay? So you can do the same. Quick shade means a quick color. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now we showed that Kim's jacket has buttons. We added hers. The next question was, now how many jackets have buttons? So when we look at this, how many jackets have buttons all together now? Yeah, one, two, three. Now three jackets have buttons. So let's fill in the number three. Okay, so we have to make sure that we include this one that we drew for Kim's jacket. All right. Ed adds a row to the graph to show jackets with snaps. Two fewer jackets have snaps than have zippers. How many jackets have snaps? All right, so let's think about this. Here's our zippers, right? How many do we have for zippers? Ah, uh, five, right? And it says that they have two fewer jackets. So are we gonna, is it five? plus two, or is it five minus two for two fewer? It's minus, fewer means less. So we need to take the five zippers and minus or subtract the two, because it says two fewer than zippers. So five minus two. So we can just even use our graph, right? Here's five. If I take two of these away, can we cover two up? How many are left? One, two, three. Five minus two is three. So how many jack jackets would have snaps? Three. All right. Think smarter. Use the graph. How many more jackets have zippers than buttons? Circle the answer. Oh, so let's think about that again. How many more jackets have zippers than buttons? Are they asking us how many have them all together or are we comparing? Think more than. Comparing, so when we're comparing, we're finding the difference. Difference means subtraction. So we have to do a minus problem. So they want us to pretend that we don't have Kim's, <laughs> which makes it a little bit more tricky because they had us add Kim's. So we have five zippers. We said it's a minus problem, we're comparing. How many buttons did they, we have before Kim? 
two. So five minus two equals. Okay, so let's think about it. You can use your fingers for that. Five, take two away. How many are left? Three. So there are three more jackets have zippers than buttons, as long as we don't include Kim's. Okay, five minus two is three. All right, you're gonna work on your personal math trainer next.